Hey, it's Taylor, and welcome back to Beyond Basketball, where we're applying the deep game principles not only to basketball, but to your life as a whole. And today, we have a favorite topic of our players, which is, of course, dating, love, and relationships. We're going to discuss what love really is, how to attract the right partner, and why I feel that actually romantic relationships are one of the biggest opportunities for growth that we have available to us in life. These are some really hard-won lessons I'm sharing here. So listen closely, enjoy, let me know what you think, and of course, stick around until the end where I'll give you a free gift that I've only shared with a small group of our Deep Game members so far. And if you want to check that out early. There's a link to it at the description and around this video or this podcast episode, wherever you're watching. Enjoy. We watched that, that little clip, how I met your mother. And it makes it seem as though like there's this one person out there and everybody finds them. And it's not a matter of, of if, but when they said that in the, and to me, that's not true. There's no shortage of people that never find it because they settle. <laughs> they settle for less. And, um, you know, that's unfortunate or fortunate or who knows, people make it work. There's all different ways. There's all different paths to it. Um, but it also maybe seems, and even through this story, like true love, so to speak, is a single person. And we find that one person and that's what like, um, that person is our true love. And as far as I can tell now, and this is the biggest thing that taught me is that true love is not a person. It's a state of consciousness that a person gives us access to. That's really important to understand. <laughs> it's really important to understand. And some people can give us um, deeper access to it, more instantaneous access to it. We and I did that for each other. Like we just pierced all the way into the middle, into the center. And to this day, like I, she kind of opened up this portal inside of me where I can go and feel that at any time, but it's not her. We're not even together. I can still feel that and access it because of her, but it isn't her. True love is, um, again, like I said, it's a state of consciousness. So, some people may give us more access than others. And we've had, um, you know, th those who have had multiple relationships in their life or maybe one relationship um, or even just crushes on people, some are stronger than others. <laughs> some are stronger than others. And if, you're, if you continue to grow and go down this path, um, as you grow and as you become more open and as you become less obstructed and the more you express what you most essentially are on that sort of seventh body level, the more whatever your counterpart is will be able to not only recognize you but um, sort of open up more access for you. So it's not really worthwhile and I, like I've been guilty of this and uh, you know, Merrick, we've spoken about this many times. Um, it's almost impossible not to get wrapped up, especially for me. I've still in my mind, I'm still like, well, but maybe it's just, maybe it's just <laughs> like there's this little voice, but in truth, um, I would really counsel everybody here to not get wrapped up in the thought that like, there's just one person. Maybe there's uh, a person that gives you access and then somebody else gives you a deeper type of access later on. But ultimately, if you understand that, then there's less clinging to the person and uh, more ability to love that person because you're not clinging on to them. <clears throat> So the first thing, uh, the first thing in this whole process, and I, I think this is probably how many people are in, I know like Mason, you just got married. Um, is anybody in a long-term relationship right now? I think Jackson, uh, sort of, <laughs> yeah. Um, so everybody's just looking. 
so th this is um, this is where we start is in choosing the right partner and <laughs> that's kind of a, a tricky statement to make because I don't think personally I don't think finding the right partner comes from like going out and hunting and looking for it and frankly the quote-unquote right partner somebody that you'd want to be with probably wouldn't be all that attracted to somebody that's like got all of this like hunting lurking energy <laughs> that's probably going to turn her away and looking back at all of the significant relationships that I've had they just kind of happened of themselves it was like I hit a point in my own development and she just appeared as sort of magical as that sounds it's um, in my opinion you don't search for the right partner and find her you grow into her and life presents, <laughs> presents you with this person. Just like when I was going to Maui, it was nothing but a friend. I, I was like completely convinced. I was actually talking with a whole bunch of other girls at the time and I was like, nah, I'm not gonna. But within you know one day of meeting, I was texting all of them, sorry. <laughs> and it, it was like. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> so that's my advice and that, that doesn't mean like don't present yourself in social situations and like don't be out in the world um, be out in the world but in the way that you want to be like live your life and someone whose life is compatible with yours will be walking the same sort of path and you'll intersect when the time is right once you've grown into the person that can have that type of relationship because this is one of those be careful what you wish for things like meeting was the most explosive transformative earth shaking like topsy-turvy world turned upside down never the same again experience in my entire life most painful thing most beautiful thing so <laughs> my advice right now is like enjoy what you got while you got it because it gets more complicated once you find this person but it also becomes a lot more beautiful um, so the first uh, piece of advice here is choose in this case like everybody here is male like choose a woman who chooses you choose a woman who chooses you this is, um, I mean, could you imagine in your relationship, like having to constantly be winning her over and convincing her that you're the one? Lose all your hair, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so many men get trapped in this, like trying constantly to win somebody over and a little persistence is fine. But ultimately, uh, a relationship is made by two people who are in love with each other not one person who's in love with the other person and constantly trying to make the other person love them the way that they love that person. Okay, so choose a woman who chooses you. Clear? <laughs> I, in a way though, when you say it like that, it's like she's the one doing the work. Maybe just the, the way that I take the wording, but do you mean like almost like the choosing happened at the same time? You choose each other. So you choose. You. No, you choose each other. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for clarifying. It's not like you're waiting for her to come up in, to you and make the move. I'm just saying you're not chasing her, and ideally she's not chasing you. It, it happens simultaneously, and maybe there's like one person pursuing the other, but ultimately, it's not a constant chase. It's not like you're pining over somebody and hoping that someday they. No, like you want the person who genuinely wants to be with you and you want to be with them. So it's mutual. Um, and really the question to ask, first of all, is uh, are you the right partner for that person? Like if you were to sit down and think, what do I want in a partner? Are you the person that they would want to be with? And everybody in this room is doing a ton of work. Like you're way ahead of the curve for probably everybody else you're around I'm imagining in terms of uh, your interest in developing yourself so I don't think that's going to be a problem but it still bears repeating like 
if you want to be with this incredible person that you're imagining, keep on doing the work because you're going to need all of your tools when you finally meet them. And a teacher of, well, somebody that I learned from for many years, Eben, Eben Pagan, um, he's a business teacher. His wife now, Annie, is a relationship coach. And I did a number of sessions with her uh, when and I were kind of going through that rocky period or multiple rocky periods. And um, Eben said this thing. He's like, true love doesn't take a lot. It takes everything. <laughs> it takes everything, everything that you've got. And so keep on expanding what you got because <laughs> you're going you're gonna to need all of it. Uh, Annie Lala, L-A-L-L-A. -L -L -A. I think she's, she's the best I've found in terms of relationship coaching. Uh, I think maybe she's slanting towards teaching women now, but back in the day it was um, both. <coughs> uh, what you're ultimately looking for is your complementary equal. And those who have been in relationships, it may be, I know for me a lot of the time, it's basically, except for me, uh, it's always felt sort of like um, a bird with one wing that's much larger than the other. There's like a big wing and a little wing, and it's flapping all lopsided. And what you want is two equal to equal wings and your complementary equal isn't necessary. Well, it's probably not uh, going to be somebody who's very similar to you. It's somebody with complementary, but maybe opposite skills. So if you're a real, like many of us are, are sort of very analytical, conceptual, intellectual thinkers, maybe you're with somebody that's like super emotionally intelligent and socially intelligent. That was the case with me and she was like really, really smart with people and had this sort of these street smarts and social intelligence. And then um, I was more on the analytical conceptual side. She's more extroverted, I'm more introverted, but it, it's complementary ultimately. And you want to make sure that the, the capacity is more or less the same. You're not lifting more weight than the other person. Um, and again, don't confuse uh, equal with the same. It's not like, okay, here's half the dishes. I'm going to do this half. You're going to do this half. And if any one of us is doing more dishes than the other person, we're going to get in a fight. It, it's, it's not that way at all. It's like, oh, I really like doing dishes. Um, you know, maybe you can do the groceries. It's find what you're good at and what you like doing. And ideally the other person does things that you're not good at and you don't like doing <laughs> and they're complementary and you can cross train each other. If you're a better thinker, hopefully you find somebody who's a better feeler and you cross train. And so a lot of has rubbed off on me. There's parts of her personality that have sort of um, rubbed off on me just by the fact that we blended into each other so much and parts of me that rubbed off on her and we're much better people as a result. So you're giving somebody access to you and you're allowing somebody to kind of become a part of you. In reality, there's little mannerisms that I can notice from like ex-girlfriends that I do still to this day and you just pick them up unconsciously. And so choose really wisely. <laughs> choose really, really wisely because sort of like uh, actually, I believe Annie was the first one to have this, uh, to use this analogy, or that I heard it from. It's almost as though you're giving your partner a, uh, your partner is a sculptor and you're handing them a scalpel and you're saying, go to work. Like you are the block of marble and they're sculpting you and you want to make sure that they, they have good hands, they know what they're doing because they will leave an impression on you. 
Hey, it's Taylor. If you enjoy this type of beyond basketball material, then I'd like to share something with you. So for the last few months, I've been writing a daily email newsletter for a small group of our deep game students who are interested in applying these principles beyond basketball to life as a whole. So we discuss things like finding your path in life, your purpose, even uh, advanced meditation and spiritual practice, love and relationships, building modern businesses, and generally speaking, the path to self mastery. And so if you'd like to join that email list, then there's a link in the description or you can head over to taylorallen.me and you'll be able to sign up for that list. And not only that, but when you sign up, I'll give you a 90 minute talk from our deep game retreat last summer where I shared for the first time ever the ninth law of the deep game. This is some of my favorite material that I've ever released. And if you like this type of talk, then you're really, really gonna love what you see in these daily emails. And of course, in the ninth law session. So head over to the link in the description and I will see you over there.